you awake? I thought I heard you get up. Yeah, I'm awake. Sorry, I just can't sleep. Are you thinking about... about him? Yeah, a bit. You should get back to sleep, my love. I'm fine. No, no, it's okay. What else is on your mind? I don't know. It seems weird, but I had one of the most vivid dreams of my life. I saw a fox on a snowy mountain, just looking confused and worried. Those eyes. I can't get those eyes out of my head. She was running in the windy snow, looking for something. Do you think it has to do with... with you and what's been going on? I don't know. It was just a dream, Rachel. They're not meant to make sense. A lot's happened the past couple days, that's all. Well, if you're not going to sleep anyway, you should tell me. I want to hear. All right. The fox looked high and low, searching for any sign of her cubs. Points of light showed the way to this ancient tree. It was as if each one had a story to tell all their own. The land was trying to tell my story, too. I felt like I was right behind her the whole time. The perpetrator stood nearby, unfazed, 
like nothing was wrong. My dad is dead, and he's never coming back, Rachel. I can tell you these stories, but I can never reminisce with him again. He can never hold a grandchild that we'll probably never be able to have. I can never talk to him again, and I'll never be able to say I'm sorry for everything. Joseph, you can't go to sleep feeling like this. I'm sorry for everything, and I know you need space, but I'm here for you. You don't need to feel so lost. Joseph, have I ever told you what my mother was like? You have strength, Joseph, and you're not as alone as you think. It's all just so pointless, just waiting for life to happen. It's like having the home I always wanted is cursed out of my reach. The thought of being a parent myself, how could I do that when I couldn't even be a good son? I'm sorry, I know what you're saying. I just don't know how things will work out. These quiet hours will turn into years. We'll wonder which roads passed us by. Then we'll forge a new road, together. Besides, I discovered for myself that one fateful morning where any hopeful road leads to. There may be thorns in this, but it always leads to the same thing. What's that? Family. I'm so glad. You're part of my family, Rachel. And I'm glad you're part of mine.
The fox knew her last cub would be waiting for her at the first tree. She was almost there. The rain cascaded onto the jade valley where the entrance to the tree was. Life was protected there because that's where life began. It was now only a mother and a daughter left. Items from my life still dotted the ground as she moved closer to her destination and destiny. It was a letter I received yesterday from a name I didn't recognize with a quote I can't stop thinking about. Death is not the opposite of life, but a part of it. More and more, I'm realizing one important truth. Each of us have our own journey to the first tree, but sometimes I'm not sure I'm ready to take that first step. You already have my love. from tomorrow. I don't think dreams normally bring back to memory so many important feelings. Maybe it was just a dream, but it was also a gift. Yeah, I suppose. But tomorrow we're getting on a plane to the last place on Earth I want to be. The only person that would have made the trip worth it is gone. You're going to see him and be with him one last time before you say goodbye. I have one last quote for you by Emerson, sealed in an imaginary letter from me to you. It is the secret of the world that all things subsist and do not die, but only retire a little from sight and afterward return again. Go to sleep, my love. We have a big day tomorrow, but I'll be there with you every step of the way. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Good night, Rachel. Good night, Joseph.
hell? Thank you.